uh, this segment of uh, particularly this first segment in which we are going to talk about the digital literacy and that too in the field of the banking. So we have someone who is expert in this particular field and he's going to enlighten us what does the banking digital uh, literacy means and because it's a banking is a concept that um, is, uh, I mean, a layman might find some sort of complexities in understanding the banking procedures, but obviously banking as it is in the modern world, you cannot live without it, right? So without any further ado, we would like to kick start a conversation and also happens to be the financial uh, literacy week uh, of uh, 2024. So uh, the state bank is conducting it. So I think it's, it's a wonderful initiative by the state bank to make sure that people out there kind of get to know more about how to be financial literate, right? Right. And uh, we're very glad that we have been joined by Ali Nakwi Saab. He happens to be the Chief Digital Officer. Assalamu alaikum, sir, and thank you so much for coming to our show. Alaikum, salam. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I loved your good morning. Thank right. you so much. Thank right. you so much. And you know, we, we, I, you know, this is for the very, I, I'm not going to say that it's the very first time, right. but it's a very rare occasion that I see a gentleman with the same vocal tone as me. <laughs> I think I'm going to appreciate that as well. It's wonderful no, to have you with no, you. Lo loved it. And so, it. So first of all, I think the first thing that we would love to ask you is that, you know, that State Bank actually came up with this initiative to observe Pakistan's National Financial Literacy Week. Right. Let's shed some light onto it. Let, uh, let us explain to our viewers, you know, what do we mean by Financial Literacy Week and from there onwards we'll take the conversation forward. Please go ahead. Yeah, right. Quickly, uh, I'll just sure. create a context around it. Uh, when you talk about digital, uh, I mean, there are two, I mean, splits into two worlds, before COVID and after COVID, yep. the evolution of digital banking in Pakistan. Before COVID, um, the decent amount of solutioning was there and the technology stack had come into the shape. However, the uptake was really not there. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I was a digital head back then. <coughs> Excuse me. So it was very difficult for us to get our things through the management and the board True. because the, the focus was really not there. The question was always there. Should we invest that kind of money into digital? Because they were better off being, you know, uh, carrying on with the, the brick and mortar. With uh, the set. conventional banking system. Yes, yes. yes. Right. So that changed after COVID. Okay. And it came in as a godsend opportunity. Of course, not the, the other side, yeah. the downside. Yeah. But, the but we weren't prepared for it, right? We weren't prepared for this opportunity. It was something that we might not, you know, have kind of thought about that, okay, we're going to invest, you know, probably maybe the cloud, making it secure and whatnot. So as soon as COVID hit, that was a time when people start to think we had learning management systems from schools, mm -hmm. you know, and then we had more uh, applications yes, online yes. to kind of make sure that, you know, our daily businesses run smoothly. True. So then for you or for Askri Bank or for other banks, was it a challenge that, okay, now we certainly need to do it as quickly as possible? No, obviously this was the learning was on the go. Yeah. You're right. We were not prepared, but when we, we were thrown into it, it really pushed us into future by eight or 10 years earlier on. I mean, had it kept its face the way things were going on the digital uh, in financial inclusion, we would not be here and still we are, you know, eight years, you know, away from that point that we are mm -hmm. here right now. And then, you know, the, the connectivity and mobility go in hand in hand. True. But these COVID crises put these forces up against each other. People were not able to move out of their homes, yet they had to go about living their lives. And True. finance is the biggest enabler of the lifestyle. True. So hence the uptake. And then I want to compliment State Bank. It came and it, it was able to write the, the way very, very smartly. The policy interventions that it did, it was required for a long, long and it, time. You know, it's always the banks who are always at that advantageous mm. side as well. So imagine that a lot mm. of online transfers were taking place. With online limits, people might have had issues and whatnot. But every but time it was you, going you transfer, the COVID, no, no, yes, it yeah. is. But you know, but every time you transfer, you know, they're deducting a certain chunk of amount <laughs> oh from yes, your, oh from yes. your, and I think that is increasing well. every day. And know? this is something yes. which hurts you the most, even if it's like 2.50 you know, or probably 10 rupees or 15 mm -hmm. or 20. You're like, okay, you know, that's an opportunity for them. Why not? You know, they're giving you that service. Mm -hmm. But what is the core motive of Financial Literacy Week? You know, this is something okay that we would certainly want to talk about the landscape over here. But the core motive is to educate the masses or do you think it's more for institutions, the financial institutions or the financial instruments that are being used or required in days to come? You know, financial literacy is all about understanding financial matters and money management. I mean, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and it, it is closely connected with the financial inclusion. <coughs> Sorry. I mean, you can push someone into opening an account and we are a nation that love cash. Yeah, know, yeah. We, we love to exchange. Mal. Yeah, mal. 
and then you can push someone into opening an account, but you really can't make her use that account. True. And that's where the problem is. And I, I'll give you a different perspective sure. on that. I mean, their efforts are being put in uh, by the government and other institutions. Uh, but, you know, it has to be, I think, value driven, True. like many other things. Mm -hmm. uh, you create a value and the benefits on top of that value chain that, you know, the demand is then, yeah. then that comes out of it. Mm. And this is how we should but proceed. But th then when you talk about financial inclusion and then you link it with the concept of financial literacy, so uh, a major chunk of a population which is living in the rural areas, right? So they might not be very well versed with the concept of banking and, and I mean the modern day gadgets or the instruments that are attached with the uh, banking system, right? So how do you bring them into the fore? Because obviously opening an account for them and then obviously the entire work is, yeah, I mean, yes, Urdu is also there, but generally it's in the English. So, so you know, what, are, what is your particular inst uh, institution doing to uh, spread the awareness in that particular population? Because I think the people of the urban areas are already well aware of the banking system, but yeah. uh, people belonging from the rural areas, they might not that much have the opportunity. Because there are always two types of people. Yeah. Number one, obviously people who do not want to get themselves into tax net. And number two, people oh, yes. who certainly do not know anything about banking or probably still True. have not got that trust to kind of invest or probably go deposit their money in the in the banks from the rural areas, please. Which is why, like I said, we, we love dealing in cash and this tax aversion. So we have to create value on top of True. that. You know, the, the some of the, the Punjab government and federal has done that. They have created benefits on top of it when you use your credit card or debit card for restaurant based transactions you get that 5% discount yeah. on the on the gs exactly so this is the mm -hmm. kind of value that you have created so that they are pushed People. into using yep. digital transactions and your question mm -hmm. i mean 60 to 64% uh, population is rural based so our outreach is limited yes. which is why uh, the digital mean is the way really to include the entire population so we have, the other banks have come up with digital account opening, okay. yeah. whereby you can open an account from the comfort of wherever you are, your home, your office, oh really? or even your yeah, yeah. village. And, yeah. and not just that, you know, because I'm, uh, because we over here at PTU World, you know, Alhamdulillah, all our salaries are being deposited into a Sri mm. bank anyways, which was just yesterday, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yes, you know, so I do, for, for a fact, I do know this, that, you know, that their digital application is yeah. actually amongst the best. You know, I have not seen a lot of application with so many, you know, benefits that you can get from an application online as well. But very quickly, let us understand the dynamic payments landscape over here in Pakistan. You know, mm -hmm. what sort of a shape are we in as of now? And then we'll proceed further. Okay. Before COVID, uh, I'll just try and explain it in terms of uh, transactional numbers. Sure. Uh, you know, the digital transactions were very less uh, in the overall banking transactions. And 80% of that was ATM driven. So whatever money was coming into the financial system True. was going out through ATMs. Whenever there was a need for a customer to fulfill, to she, he or she will go to an ATM and take that money out, and then cash goes back into the, the world of cash. True. That has changed. Now that 85% has reduced to 25% only. And the mobile app usage and the internet banking usage has picked up, have picked up really. So it is now 60% and the ATM usage is 25%. <laughs> So all of this is because, like I said, the people were pushed into using electronic transactions after COVID. So that's the change that then. That so came speaking out. of this landscape, do you think that there will be a time in days to come that we are talking about paperless economy? Do you, do you think that there will be a time of, of such sort that if I'm going to go to any shop, I right. do not really have to carry any sort of cash, you know, so may it be with the bank wherever my transactions will go smoothly. I'll get whatever chini, atta, dal I need to get and go back home and no cash is involved. That's possible now. I have never been so optimistic. I have been a digital head for a long time. If you had asked me this question before COVID, I would have given, I would have yeah, yeah, you know, played yeah. around yeah. words. And, but now I know the future is there and the trajectory is building. The okay. wave is really there. True. And the banking industry is really trying to not get overrun by uh, this wave because the financial industry is not all about banks now with the advent of uh, fintechs and the digital banks. True. So that's possible that you go to a store, walk into a store, because like I said, the policy interventions that State Bank did and their focus on digitizing retail payments, we are a, we are a consumption-led economy. True, true. Most of our income, incomes go that way. So that's possible 
uh, there are multiple solutions. Because I because I think that I've lived this life as well. Alhamdulillah, wherever I've gone, you know, people have given me udhar, you know, so it has always been paper but, 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 for me. But I think, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the uh, concept of the credit cards and debit cards and also the online payment it also, I mean, sort of a set in very uh, finely into the concept of the paperless economy. But now, but when Shazad talked about the paperless economy, and I think he uh, was highlighting a very important point. So we come to uh, an um, concept that is very much ingrained into the digital era, which is the concept of that data breach, right? Or the privacy issues that are taking place. You know, we see across the world that it's not just the, especially in the cloud computing, that uh, how data is being breached by the hackers. So, and, and obviously banks is, is something that people trust a lot, right? Because money is something very sacred, right? And people trust you, so, I mean, more than their own relatives, right? So what sort of a steps are you taking, particularly in this era? era to protect the privacy and, and you know make sure that there is no data breach when it comes to your financial transactions? Great question. This is the most important area that we try and take care of. Yes. You know, yes. you have to understand as soon as you shift from physical value chain to digital value mm -hmm. chain, there are inherent risks attached with the digital value chain that you have said. Sure, sure. State Bank is very, very proactive, progressive, and we are also because we have to give that trust and confidence to our customers. So recently, our app management, like yeah. you said, you are a user. Everything is biometrically enabled. There are OTPs that are built on top of every transaction yeah. you do. Okay. And at times, that's that's a little friction for at a customer. At times, you don't even get the OTP. I think that's the only thing which gets you worried. Why you not get the OTP? That's a network issue. But see, we at times, we intentionally put in a little bit of friction to safeguard your interest. True. And it's nice. And at, yeah, customer at times don't like it, but then we reach out to them and explain to them, that this is for your own security so that you know, yeah. your your identity is really protected. Exactly, and this is something which, which you certainly want as well. But you know, while we were talking about the landscape and the and the and the dynamics of banking over here, let's talk about the banked and unbanked populations and how do you think that these institutions like Askri Bank or other banks are trying to get them into their network? Number one, number two, because I've been working, I'm, I was lucky enough that you know I I was in Dubai, you know, just two days ago for Bank Al Habib, and we did a remittance drive over there. Right. And I was shocked to know that $30 billion, you know, every year comes in through banking channels, you know, and that's the kind of remittance right. that Pakistan survives on. Now, mm -hmm. how do you think that the financial institutions are making sure that you make it, you know, the legal transactions, the legal money sending apparatus in a way where it's more conducive for the population to live abroad? Because that's, that's mm -hmm. where we really need to get the chunk in as well, because a lot of people still rely on illegal means of transferring money to their loved ones back home. Exactly. That, like I said, it has to be demand driven and you have to incentivize and build a reward system on that. True. I mean, recently the government has gone into trying to build that value chain for that. Uh, the unbanked, I mean, despite of a trajectory and the wave that we have talked about it, 30% is financially included and 70% <laughs> still lives out of the financial sector. I mean, that's, like I said, our love for cash. But there are a number of efforts that mm -hmm. the entire industry, not just, this is not limited to banks, the fintechs are also part of the play, which helps us create that effective ecosystem. So that's happening. Like I said, the digital account opening, you don't have to go to a branch. Yeah. And these, and then my optimism really, uh, you know, rests on this, this 60% under the age of 30. Yeah. That's the chain that is coming. It is already... The and, and the best part, sir, over here is that, you know, people who are under 30, uh, specifically right. within the, you know, urban regions, what we have seen is that with YouTube and TikTok and all of these, there are a lot of dollars which are coming in. Yes. And the banks really need to cash in on that as well. You know, for Pakistan to kind of, you know, rely on remittances, that's mm -hmm. one thing. I mean, you know, because we have, our capital is human resource basically mm -hmm. world over. So I think that the banks really need to provide some value to all of those people who are expats, you know, probably live outside the country so that wherever they have to send in the money it's more convenient for them rather than going in now imagine that for me to get 1200 dirhams you know from a currency exchange i had to give my passport i had to give my nic yes. i had to give them an explanation i have to give them my office card you know there's so many things mm. then you know you think like okay yaar, me pe de ke le lena. you know as if it's not you know available it's available everywhere you know and there are no crackdowns against all of those people who are selling the foreign currency or foreign exchange and right. that too in, in black market, you know. So I think that the state bank really needs to do something about it rather than your bank. Uh, absolutely. It has to be an overall effort that <laughs> should be you know, done by the industry. But there's a saying in, even in the international arena 
that the quickest way of getting your remittance across is that you travel across yeah, and yeah, hand yeah. it over to. But like I Wo said, this, dollars is other yes, this. The, the, the solutions are happening. You talked about we talked about this 60 percent under the age 30. Uh, the freelancers, yeah. uh, the remittances that are being enabled through that channel. True, true. I mean, we have 9% of the total freelance, true, fourth true. largest destination. The hope, the optimism is there. True. And these solutions, like we, there are two ways to parts of the value chain. We have to create solutions and then incentivize and build rewards on top of it for e people to adopt. True, true, true. And like I said, these, these youngsters coming to the helm of things, Mm. The, the trajectory and the landscape is already changing. Right, right. And thank you so much, Ali Saab, for coming here, for having this wonderful conversation regarding financial literacy and how we can tackle or, uh, I mean, tap in the unbanked population. And, because and Ajay, if you allow me, you know, there are just a couple of suggestions, probably a recommendation, which I would love to sure, ask sure, from him, you know, before we wrap it up. And that's it, that, you know, every time that you go to a bank, because, you know, you have a bank account, there's so many questions the bank is going to ask you. Do you think that the banks in, in days to come need to do something? For example, you're purchasing a car, you know, the economy is in, unfortunately, is in such a state that even mm -hmm. a car which is probably, which was a million rupees worth, actually costs you now six million rupees, right? Yes. So every time you're out there at the bank and you withdraw six million rupees, the bank is going to ask you so many questions, mm -hmm. you know, ID card photocopies and whatnot. Do you think that there can be ways of easing this process out for people? Because imagine any plot that you're going to go buy, you know, it, it starts from minimum to minimum 10 million rupees, right? That, that's where the confusion is. And then when you call the bank, these are not even suggestions, probably just complaints on the lighter side that, you know, that you call the bank and the guy is going to be like, Suraj cash nahi hai. You know, so this is, this is one thing which everybody yes, comes across. Yes. Why do you think that the banks are there if they do not even have the cash with them? You know, so these are those fault lines which I believe that the banks and the institu financial institutions need to work on because they prioritize a few people, they will give them whatever they want, they won't prioritize other people. So how do you think that the banks really need to have the same green channel for everybody who actually happens to be their customer? You know, this all comes down to really knowing your customer. At Askri, our mission is getting closer to our customer. Okay. The more we know our And how customer, do you bridge that gap? You know, it's... First, we know our customer, it's that hand-holding, really creating that interface link between the customer and us, listening to her, and then on the go, making changes and realigning our solution design. True. And this is how you, the app that you like, yeah. I, I hope we'll get a feedback from Inshallah. you as well. I love it. So this, this is a continuous process, knowing customer <coughs> and protecting her data and then making her understand the little bit of friction is there to safeguard her interest. Okay. This is not to, you know, uh, exactly make an inconvenience for her. Exactly. And, and very quickly, one last thing, because in the West, whenever you go around, mm. all you need is your cell phone, right? You tap it onto the device and that's it, you know, you, you paid it. Mm. I saw that option in Askri Bank's uh, application, but unfortunately, it's not working for me. So, you know, so what happens is that you put your card you know, probably just comes in a picture form in your mobile phone in an application and then you just tap your phone and that's it, your mobile is your wallet. Do you think in days to come we're going to see that technological advancement because you happen to be the chief digital officer anyways? It's the solution called tokenization. Yeah. It's very much possible through that. The card gets embedded into the mobile app yeah. and you don't have to tap a card, you just tap your mobile. Yeah. It is in it looks cool as well. Yeah, you know, you, is, you feel is. like James Bond. You don't have to carry money. You don't have yeah. to carry your wallet. Just the mobile, which is with us all the all time, 24/7. Mm -hmm. So the transactions are going to be enabled through the mobile uh, yeah, phone. And, and will it work in days to come? Absolutely, absolutely. See, the transactional success rate is increasing, which Mashallah. is why this trajectory exactly. Is and the trust that you don't carry hard <laughs> cash in your wallet and just carry your mobile. Yeah. that's the objective that. Exactly. Well, thank, thank you so much, Mr. So Ali Nakvi, for being with so us, much. the Chief Digital Officer at Askri Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, because I think I would want everybody to understand this, that, you know, fi your financial literacy actually depends on you. True. You really need to make sure that you educate yourself, you're well aware of, you know, the procedures out there and how you can actually True. be smarter from the brain. You know, because when we started to earn money, Alhamdulillah, we were very young, we didn't knew anything. Then later on, you know, our universities kind of contributed towards our financial management and financial literacy. But people who are really smart, ladies and gentlemen, learned it at a very early age. And for everybody who's out there, it's very important for us to be financially literate in an era which is all about digitalization.